Welcome to this episode of Business Battleground. If there's a new world order in the world of entertainment, you can imagine that there's also one in the world of gaming. So, what's the best way to ride the opportunity in gaming, esports? Matthew Ball has built up his reputation covering the uh, world of entertainment. He covers a lot of the streaming landscape and, you know, you could argue that he's a fanboy of Disney with reason. He came up with a really interesting article recently uh, called Seven Reasons Why Gaming is Basically, you know, the Future of Entertainment and Going to Dominate the Landscape. Quickly, uh, before moving on to the point I want to make, the seven were the dominant attention medium, television, has peaked and its time is being redistributed. Two, gaming is replicating the TV package. Three, Gaming has unprecedented content leverage. Four, social signals, effects, and reinforcement. Five, tightest feedback loops in culture. Six, consistent growth through new devices, categories, technologies, content. And seven, IP or intellectual property. So this led me to think, what is the best way to play the growth if you are an investor? So. When IGN Entertainment bought my old company, Ask Men, back in 2005, I was blown away, we all were, by the size of the gaming market, which was even then larger than Hollywood and entertainment, meaning entertainment, home releases, and theatrical. IGN today uh, is owned by J2, which was the old eFax company that over time has moved from a cloud-based uh, software and technology company to a digital media one as well. In 2012, J2 acquired Ziff Davis from Great Hill Partners for $167 million. Now, Ziff Davis obviously was the venerable publisher of many magazines that went bankrupt, Great Hill bought it, restructured it, and eventually unloaded it to J2. And by the way, if you're wondering, indeed, Great Hill Partners is the very same company that bought Gizmodo Media Group from Univision, rebranded it Geo Media, and has basically since then had some uh, challenges, so to speak. If you're interested in that, check out the panel we conducted uh, in New York back in November. Now, another side note, Great Hill Partners is also the company that in the late 1990s had acquired IGN, restructured it, brought it back from the brink of death, and basically ended up selling it to News Corporation in 2005. IGN had previously in that year bought Ask Men, so I, for a brief period of time, worked for IGN News Corp before taking Rupert Murdoch's money to launch Watch Mojo. Thank you, Rupert. So indeed, Great Hill Partners is connected to both IGN and Ziff Davis. Anyway, if you fast forward to today, the esports market is poised to overtake traditional sports. So considering that I live on the edge through Watch Mojo's existence, when it comes to my investment strategy, I am pretty boring and invest in fairly diversified portfolio of stocks and bonds and whatnot. But because I don't go to the casino to gamble, once in a while, I'll just place some bets on some high-risk equity, some stocks that are pretty volatile and that my financial managers would never be crazy enough to touch. I've already disclosed on a previous episode that I was long Snapchat, which has done pretty well since I bought them. I also last year decided to place a bet on enthusiast gaming because I felt it was a good opportunity to ride the esports growth. IGN being a part of J2 isn't necessarily the best pure play way to ride the growth in gaming or esports. But by virtue of being a standalone company focused in the esports landscape, I felt that Enthusiast Gaming was maybe a better proxy for the sector. As a result, I decided to go long and buy shares in Enthusiast Gaming last year. Now, Enthusiast Gaming, for those who don't know, owns Destructoid and Escapist magazine, which it bought from Defy before Defy shut down. Last year, in 2019, it merged with Luminosity, and of course, it also runs the Enthusiast Gaming Live Expo in Toronto. At one point, the stock was up, but after merging with Luminosity, it's tanked a little bit, and at the end of 2019, I wanted to determine if I should unload my holdings and basically take a loss, which I don't like to do, or simply dollar cost average and double down. In some ways, I viewed Enthusiast Gaming as a next-generation IGN, which ultimately sold for $650 million to News Corporation. Was that a fair assessment? Let's take a look. In 2005, when IGN bought Ask Men, it had already merged with its arch-enemy GameSpy. It had also acquired Rotten Tomatoes, giving it a foray into the entertainment landscape, Ask Men helping it get exposure to lifestyle advertisers and a lifestyle audience. When iGen approached Ask Men, it was to gain exposure into the lifestyle segment, the same way that Rotten Tomatoes had given it an entry into the entertainment market. Previously, iGen had merged with its arch competitor, GameSpy, so it effectively had four of the top 
websites catering to the men's 18 to 34 market. Now I decided to buy into Enthusiast Gaming thinking it could be the next IGN Entertainment. Is that a fair expectation? Today, the gaming landscape has both become fragmented and democratized. It's become democratized because individual streamers have been empowered by Amazon's Twitch, Microsoft's Mixer, and of course, YouTube. In November of 2019, Mixer signed Ninja to an exclusive deal. The landscape has also become rather fragmented. For one, back in the day, most audiences discovered content through search engines. Today, a lot of content is shared through social platforms. Two, back in the day, a lot of engagement happened on owned and operated websites, of which IGN, GameSpy, as well as Ask Men and Rotten Tomatoes were examples of. Today, a lot of engagement is happening on these big platforms, be it Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, or Mixer. Three, gaming publishers like Activision are launching these leagues themselves to own the audience and own where the action takes place. Four, technology behemoths like Google Stadia are basically launching direct-to-consumer platforms where they could own all the action as well. So in that new world order of gaming, is Enthusiast really likely to be the next IGN? So what's your take? What's the best pure play way to ride the growth in gaming and esports? Let me know in the comments.